Greetings, Zion. So glad you can join us for Ash Wednesday. Now for Ash Wednesday, we begin a new series called How to Pray Bold Prayers. Now it's based on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, it's something that we're very familiar with. Um, but when we really dive deeply into it, we will realize that Jesus is teaching us how to pray boldly before the throne of God. Now, I would love to invite you, I would, I'm would. i inviting you, and I hope you can join us, is that for the next couple Wednesday, we will look at every petition from the Lord's Prayer. And from that, we will learn how Jesus was able to pray bold prayers before his Father. So without further ado, let's begin with the introduction of this series. Now, in the ministry of Jesus, three and a half years, he performed more than 34 miracles. Now, only 34 miracles were recorded in detail in the Gospels. Many of those involved healing the sick, driving out demons. In fact, he also raised the dead. And there are two incidences where he multiplied food and fed a huge crowd. One time it was, uh, one time it was on one side of the Sea of Galilee, and the other side it was with um, non-Jewish people. And so, when you look at Jesus's ministry, he raised the dead. He performed so many miracles. But the very, the in interesting part about this is that while the disciples had witnessed these miracles, they had never asked him how to perform it. Like. Jesus, how do you multi how do you change water to wine, or how do you raise the dead? Notice they never asked that question. Now, one time Jesus was praying at a certain place. After he finished praying, one of the disciples approached him and asked him, "Lord, teach us to pray." Wow, teach us to pray. Why not raise the dead? Why not multiply food? Why not these other miracles? Why teach us how to pray? Now, I suspect that they have witnessed something different about Jesus. The fact that somehow when he prayed, he prayed boldly before God, and that when he prayed, things happened. And so they came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Jesus replied by saying, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now Jesus came, his mission was to reveal the Father to you and me. In fact, the word Father is used 189 times in the Gospels. Jesus calls his Father in heaven, Abba a very close and intimate relationship. In our language, it's daddy. So the key here, so the key here to praying bold prayers is this. Knowing that God is your father and that you are his child. Let me say that again. The key to praying bold prayers is knowing that God is your father and that you are his child. Now, Jesus came, Jesus grew up in Nazareth, and he came from the Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist. When he got there, John was reluctant to baptize him. But Jesus convinced him by saying, it is necessary to fulfill what God requires. And so John baptized him. As soon as he got out, out of the water, something violent happened. The heavens were torn open. The Holy Spirit descended upon him and rested upon him like a dove. Then a voice from heaven said this, This is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Did you notice that? At this point in the ministry of Jesus, he had not preached one sermon yet. He had not, not performed one miracle yet. He hadn't done anything in ministry yet. 
And yet God says, I am, this is my son whom I love with you. I am well pleased. So right here you see God the Father was reaffirming the identity of Jesus. God was showing the whole world that this is my son. And so Jesus prayed bold prayers because he knew that God was his father and that he was his son. In 1 John 12 to 13, this is what St. John wrote. Not for, sorry, John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children not children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. You see, the moment, the moment you receive Jesus Christ, or the moment you were baptized in Christ, you became a child of God. It says, to those who believe, he gave the right to become children of God. And so when you are a child of God, you don't need to come before God begging him to listen to you. In fact, he invites you to listen to you. When you become a child of God, your father is the king of kings and lord of lords. That makes you a prince or a princess. And so the key to praying boldly or praying is, is to know, is knowing that God is your father and that you are his child. That's how Jesus prayed, knowing he knew who he was and who he belonged to. Do you know who you are and whose you are? That is the difference between praying timid prayers versus bold prayers. Now, speaking of identity here, let's follow, continue to follow the story of Jesus. Right after uh, Jesus was baptized, remember that story I just talked about, heaven was torn open, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and the voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Right away, right after that, the Holy Spirit led him or drove him into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And the tempter came to him and said, now, pay attention to these words. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus responds with the word of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil takes him to Jerusalem. And on top of the temple said, and he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Did you notice? Did you notice? If you are the son of God, the tempter was trying to shake his identity. If you are, and notice not only that, he omitted a phrase, if you are a beloved son of God. Friends, that's how the same thing for you and me. Oftentimes, the tempter comes to us and says, the devil, God will not listen to your prayers. Are you really a child of God? Look at your sin. Look at your failures. God won't hear your prayers. Your past isn't forgiven. You've made too many mistakes. It's too late for you. And so when we listen to that, we come before God hesitant to pray, or our prayers are weak. Notice what St. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Whoa, what good news. When you, when God becomes your father, you become this new creation. Everything is made new. You are made new in Christ. A brand new person. A new identity. Let me just, uh, just bring this to a close with a very familiar story. We all know the story of the prodigal son. 
Now, perhaps it should be renamed the, the loving father, but we know the story. Um, father has two sons. One of the younger son demanded his share of the inheritance. His father manages to get him his share and he leaves home for good. He had never intended to come back. Well, he squandered all of his wealth and um, the famine hit the place where he was at. It says a far off country and he was so hungry and he ran out of money that he volunteered to watch the pigs for a farmer. He was so hungry that he was hoping, he was wishing, in fact, the pig feet looked good to him. Well, he finally came to his senses and he had an idea that perhaps if he apologizes to his father and begs him to receive him as a servant, perhaps he can earn the money back and perhaps regain his independence. But here's the beautiful part of the story. When he came home, notice this in Luke 15, but while he was still a long way off, long way off, his father saw him, was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. In ancient society, it was shameful for an older man to run. His father shamed himself, shamelessly ran to hug him. The son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. You notice this? His sin and his guilt made him feel unworthy. You see, isn't that like us? When we sin, we feel guilty, we feel unworthy to come before God and pray. Now his identity was shaken now because of his sin. But look at how his father reaffirmed his identity. His father said to the servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. A ring on his finger, sandals on his feet, bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and found. So, so they began to celebrate. Wow, did you catch that? He received three things. Number one, he received a new robe. And that's a symbol of righteousness. When Christ died on the cross, he switched places with us. We received his clean robe of righteousness. The second thing he received was a ring. The ring is a symbol of authority. This is the son of the family. This is the prince. The third thing he received was sandals. And sandals back then was a symbol of status. And on top of that, the father throws a huge party. And notice the language. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Do you notice that? Before the father's eyes, the identity of his son never changed. There was never a point in time where this was not his son. His father loved him because he's his son. His godfather forgave him because he's his son. His father reaffirmed his identity by giving him a new robe, sandals, a ring, and this huge party. And so the key to praying bold, with boldness is knowing that God is your father and that you are his child. Matthew 7, 9 to 11. Let me just leave you with this verse. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Rhetorical question, which just means none. Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a, a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Come before God, our Father, Daddy, in heaven. The key to praying with boldness 
is knowing that God is your father and you are his child and nothing in this entire universe that can change this. Amen. So glad you can join us. Please join me for a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for reaffirming our identity. We are your children. We are yours. We belong to you forever. We thank you for that privilege to be your sons and daughters. We thank you that you invite us to pray, knowing that you hear us. Even before we pray, you already know what we are going to ask for. Father, help us to come to you boldly each and every day and to pray and to speak to you about our cares, our needs and concerns. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.